Now, the great thing about physics teachers is that we like to talk about physics, and that means there's often lots of forums where teachers share things that they've learnt, maybe new techniques for teaching things. And I know in the work that I do for the Institute of Physics, I can go into schools and we can share things quite freely about, you know, better ways to actually teach the course. So teachers like to share good things. And this also includes information they find out about the exams, which is what's probably really important for you. Now, recently, I, I saw a bit of a, a thread on an email chain and it was to do with how different answers come up on multiple choice questions and maybe which one is more popular. Now, the disclaimer is that um, there is no quick fix. There's no secret to getting the right answer on multiple choice questions. The best way to get better at multiple choice questions is to understand the physics. The better you understand the physics, the more questions you've practiced, the higher the, higher the likelihood is you're going to get to that question and actually have a good understanding of what not only what the physics is, but also what the right answer might be. And often when people make mistakes, it's because they get lazy, they take shortcuts. And even though you're not being assessed on your working out, it's still a really good idea to maybe put down the equation you're using, show you're working out, and then, then that means there's going to be a higher chance of you getting the right answer. Even though that isn't marked, what is marked is whichever answer you choose. You may be colouring the lozenge, you might put a cross through the correct answer. So the more working out you do, the more time you spend doing physics problems in the run-up to your exams, the better you're going to get on in multiple choice questions. The other thing, and teachers I'm sure you're going to back me up on this, is the amount of times I've marked a paper and a student hasn't even guessed one of, one of the four options. So they might have got some answers right beforehand, they maybe don't know what the answer is, and rather than coming back to it at the end, maybe marking it that there's something they don't know, they forget about it, and that means they lose what could be an easy mark. Now, the other thing about multiple choice, is it isn't really a big proportion of your whole exam. Yeah, you might have 25 questions, but on your all maybe three exams that you do for the full A-level, you might have 300 marks available. So we're talking about, you know, definitely less than 10%. So if you maybe get a couple of extra marks on the multiple choice, it's not going to drastically affect the grade that you get ultimately. What it comes down to is your written answers about knowing the physics, and that's, what go that's what's going to lead to success. However, um, this other teacher, uh, let's call him Mr Jones, because that's his name, uh, he teaches at uh, Monmouth School for Boys. And again, hello to all the people at uh, Monmouth School. I know that um, you watch my videos, so this video is really inspired by your teacher, Mr Jones. Well, I emailed him, uh, and he gave me some extra data because when they were doing some marking, they found that certain answers seem to come up a lot more than you'd expect. Now, it should be that if you've got four possible answers over an exam paper or several exam papers, you might expect to see maybe 25% of the time A is correct, 25% for B, and so on. But actually what he found, uh, and I've got the data here so I can actually refer to it as I'm, uh, as I'm talking to you now, is they found that in 2018 on paper two for AQA, they found that the answer C came up 44% of the time, yet the answer B only came up 16%. Now that seems quite strange. So what they did was they looked at some other papers, and I've got all the data up here, but basically by looking at the new specification for AQA, so this is 2017, 2018, 2019, looking at paper one and paper two, they found that overall, uh, the, an the correct answer being A, only came up 17% of the time. The answer B came up 24%, the answer C came up 33%, and the answer D came up 26% of the time. So I suppose what that means is, uh, looking at the past data, if you didn't know what the right answer might be, it'd probably be twice as good to choose C as opposed to choosing A, if you're gonna guess at all. Now that's just a little bit weird, and um, it's just, a, I suppose, a bit of a statistical anomaly. So they also looked uh, at the AS papers. So again, this is for AQA physics. Uh, they looked at 2016, 17, 18, and 19. And again, they found actually almost the kind of same proportion that um, answer C came up 28% of the time, um, but answer A only came up 23% of the time. However, there's more papers here. There's more um, series of exams. And actually, you can see it's pretty much even. But what did it used to be like in the olden days? Well, they looked at the old paper 4A, this one here is also AQA, and um, they found actually that pretty much A, B, C or D, over a period of about eight years, they came up pretty much the same proportion. So there wasn't really any advantage to choosing C over A. 
So this got a few other teachers thinking, uh, and they did some analysis, um, including some work from Edexcel, where um, at AS level for Edexcel, I think they found that C came out on top, again being 31%, um, although it really depends on the paper. So for example, uh, in 2016, 2017, D was the most common. In 2019, um, it was B. And actually, they found as well that A only came up about 17% of the time. So it seems that A isn't always a likely choice. Now, does that mean that next year you should choose C? Probably not, uh, because it's completely random which letter they're going to give to it. And they're definitely going to make sure that when they look at the papers, there's not a skew one way or the other. Um, what is interesting, though, is that um, when they look at all the responses from students around the country, they find that A is often the least frequent response, but B is the most common response that students choose. And I think it's something to do with you don't choose the outliers, you don't choose a, the smallest or the biggest value, you tend to choose something in the middle, and that's why answer B is often chosen, even if it's just a guess and maybe the incorrect answer, B is often chosen more than A. So um, basically, um, does this matter? Well, not really, because uh, the best way to get a good grade to kind of go to the next grade isn't to spend the time trying to look at statistics, trying to look at previous papers and try and second guess what might come up. The best way to get good at physics, at doing these multiple choice questions, is just to practice as many questions as possible. Not just multiple choice, although obviously that's going to come into your practice as you start revising for your exams, but just all the kind of normal written questions, questions from your textbook, questions from websites like Isaac Physics, questions from older past papers, all of these things will make you a better physicist. Um, but I think it's just an interesting point, and if you're going to guess something, um, me personally, I probably wouldn't choose A, I'd choose B or C going forward, but um, that's just me. Anyway, that's just me rambling on. I hope it's been a little bit interesting, but it's just nice to show you that, you know, teachers do think about this and the exam boards get involved and they try and make things as fair as possible for you guys. So uh, in the run up to my next video, um, keep working hard. Again, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to this channel. You can turn on notifications to see the videos that I'm putting out at four o'clock each day and also in the future when I'll be having live streams up there. So if you haven't already done so, please get this channel up to the next, uh, you know, 100,000 subscribers would be lovely. Uh, just help out as many of you people as possible. If you haven't already done so as well, uh, you can sign up to alevelphysicsonline.com. On the website, if you sign up, you can stay subscribed to see which, late, which of my latest videos that I'm putting out, any like hints and tips. Uh, so that's all for free, and if you want to, you can view extra videos for Year 13, which will help you with your multiple choice questions, uh, and that's just £19.99. So in the meantime, uh, keep working hard, and I'll be with you very soon with some more videos. Thank you.